back to today, truth is stronger than blood. I know this doesn't sound very clear to start with, but as you read the newsletter, as proven with all the literature of this ministry, when you read it and you concentrate and you zero in, you find it to be maybe sometimes a little bit annoying to your carnal plans <coughs> and to the flesh. But that's, look, if you're reading literature that claims to be from Jesus and it's not annoying your flesh, well I would reckon that you probably, most probably, been immortalised. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I tell you what I, I haven't been immortalised yet I still got the flesh I still got things that uh, I read in the scriptures and they speak to me very clearly and so that's why Paul the Apostle said I die daily didn't he each day the Lord shows us something we must die to it might be small, it might be big but it still has to be died to and the Lord is a genius oh no he's not, he's not a genius the Lord is God and I exalt him he's above that you know, he's above that limitation words of limitation Truth is stronger than blood. We've all heard the saying that blood is stronger than water. You know, they're talking about family, in, in, usually, in the layman's terms. Blood is thicker than water. But by the power of the Holy Ghost, I've come to see that truth is, is stronger than blood. I, I've experienced it with my own family. I have five sisters, and I had one brother, and he died. The, his body died anyway and his soul and his spirit has gone to be with the Lord I rejoice I, I'm not living my life now waiting to see him because I know I will I, I'm waiting to be with my husband Jesus in an immortal way in, in, in the fullness That's, but I know my brother will be there and I know my mother will be there because they received Jesus as their saviour and they accepted the word of God up to the light they had so the scripture I chose is Solomon's 8 7 many waters cannot quench love nor can the floods drown it if a man would give for love all the wealth of his house it would be utterly despised now listen Brother Solomon is not speaking about eros love here or philia. He's not talking about erotic love and he's not talking about friendship love. They're the only two loves that the people of the world know of, eros and philia. They don't know agape love because they're not born into it. When you're born again, you're born into agape love in the Hebrew text, ahava. You're born into that and you think to yourself, hang on, I don't know why this is happening to me, why the things of the world are grown strangely dim. Why I no longer drool over a hardtail hog. Why I no longer um, jump up and down over the things I used to jump up and down over. It's because this, this new love has come into my life. And this love, I tell you what, Many waters can't quench it. I'm talking about the love itself. I'm not talking about my love for Jesus. It can be quenched. But they don't teach that much in the churches because there's no money in them. You can't get dairy airs on saints. I'm not here for money and I'm not here for dairy airs on saints. I'm not here to glorify me. I'm here to proclaim a message. I've been sent. I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger on this earth. I'm not here to think, oh, well, how did they like that? Oh, they really like that. Oh, that got a few more in. I might preach the same sort of thing next week. That get, get more in. No, no, no. I, I, don't, I, I just couldn't cope with that. I, I, I don't want that. 
I've got to go to sleep at night and lay my head on the pillow with a clean heart and a clean conscience. Knowing that I haven't bound people up with tithing and garbage, obsolete teachings and, and, and Old Testament requirements. Jewish requirements. I, I must go to sleep at night. And I tell you what, I don't have a problem sleeping. My mum didn't know a real lot. You know, she was no, no brainwave, so to speak. She is a brilliant mum and a good housewife which is probably the greatest job in the world, the most demanding. I reckon probably more demanding than the Prime Minister or President. Because most of the time the Prime Minister and the President don't have to make heartfelt decisions. <laughs> but she used to say in her own limited wisdom, oh, you know why they can't sleep they got a guilty conscience, they have. There might be a bit of truth in that too. Many waters cannot quench love. It takes a little bit of concentration to find the ultimate road and the ultimate way. The scriptures say that we must strive to enter by the narrow gate because many will seek. We'll have the Peter, Pauls and Marys, the seekers, but the strivers, this is talking about a guts effort stuff, you know what I mean? She's boot camp material. She's, ah, logs on shoulders. On top of your pack, that is. <laughs> you know, this is jungle patrol with leeches hanging off you and you haven't eaten for three days in the Tully jungle. Come on. And as you go along... You've got to hold your durry over and cover your durry so no enemy soldier can see it and you're burning off the leeches as you're walking. <laughs> and then you usually have a punch up in the middle of the wait a while vines with one of your mates because he won't give you a light. And he's only got one match left. Hello? <laughs> yes. Nor can floods drown it. But we know relationships can be strained. Divorce does happen. We know husbands and wives can drift apart. We can go on together. We're suspicious man. And we can live our dream on suspicious man. So with an old friend I know. These things happen, but this is not the love that Solomon's talking about. He's talking about agape love here. Because waters can't quench it, floods can't drown it. And if a man seems to think that he can give something for this love, he's sadly mistaken. It's a grant. And Paul said that to the Ephesian church. I pray that God would grant you to know the love of God, the depth, the width, and the height, the power, and the strength. Truth is stronger than blood, and once you're born again of the truth, of course, we're born again of the Spirit and the Word, the Word of the doctrine, the truth. We're born again of that, of the immortal seed. It, it's, a, it's a love word. The, the whole of the word of God is love. I've never encountered anything else. Even the judgment of God is love. And if someone says the judgment of God is not love, they're selfish. They're only thinking of themselves. But when we look at the word as the spirit would have us look at it and receive it, I tell you what, <laughs> it's peculiar, but it's powerful. This love is able to, as I said on the newsletter, it, it, it's able to, although it can't be priced and it can't be bought, but it's able to, to quench and soak up all our ungodly thirst, hungers and misguided thoughts.
Everything can be deleted in this love. And you know, if someone said to me, can you explain love to me? I'm, I, I, not eros. I know anyone. Everyone knows about eros, erotica. Everyone knows about filia love, friends and buddies, old mate, you know. But that perishes, doesn't it? Over, I, I've had the best of mates. And the backside's fallen out of a lot of it. <laughs> See? When Adam and Eve done what they did and initiating it was the woman and the whole lot caved in and the wheels fell off the car called Eden, listen, they were left with only in the world two types of love. Which accounts for the hunger of such things, doesn't it? Yeah, everyone's hungering for that, the, the, the eros and the philia. The friendship, love, oh, mate, 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 buddy, pal, you know, we're there till the death. Two weeks later, like, where is he? <laughs> Where's my old mate, Bill? Hey, true blue, is it me and you? Is it mum and dad or is it a cockatoo? Where you stand beside you, mate? When is it a fight? Oh, is it Vegemite? Well, they sold them out too, didn't they? So the old Vegemite mob out. And the bite of Brits and all of them were going. <laughs> Down to the Barilla Soap. <laughs> Caro Soap, I reckon she's going overseas too. Can someone say I'm in here today? <laughs> Woo! Glory, hallelujah, eh? Oh, we've only just begun to preach truth and honesty, humility and power to takes a little concentration to find that ultimate way and when you do. You know what you're going to say? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you're going to say to yourself, man, I found the pearl of great price. <laughs> Woo! I said to Brother Gavin the other day, I said, how'd you go? We're on the phone, you know, and he gets on the blower. When will I see you again? When will we share precious moments? I said, do I have to wait forever? <laughs> And he said to me, is it the beginning or is it the end? And I finished up with, when will I see you again? Oh, 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 will I see you? Sweet, sweet Lord, when will I see you? And yeah, that was just sort of the intro stuff. <laughs> intro, outro. <laughs> and uh, he, said, he said, you know what, Paul? And I said, brother. He said, oh, it's not brother. Brother, Paul. <laughs> And he said, you know what? He said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going free. Since I found that paddock, mate. Since I found your little paddock, I'm, like, I'm just going free. I said, well, that's what it's about. That's what the Word is about. It's not me, it's the Word. The glory belongs to the Jewish king who hung on the tree, amen. And I've said it before, you, you won't find a message like this anywhere in the city or nation. No. No. I Look, oh. I boldly declare that. You just won't find... You'll find a look, plenty of lookalikes, plenty of copycats, but you won't find something like that. <laughs> you won't find the authentic panic material. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. So, this love, this, this, this agape love, ahava in the, in the Hebrew text, this word of God leads us into a eternal utopia, a, an eternal heaven. And we know by the scriptures that Peter said there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we've got a lot of teachers of the Bible today saying, oh, well, you know, we're going to be living on this earth and, you know, uh, blessed are the meek because they will inherit the earth. But not this earth. What on earth? What sort of God would give you this rubbish? Hey? What sort of God would give you this rubbish? This earth today, we look, just got you don't even have to go into the Bible, you just listen to the news. They'll tell you about the minerals in the earth, they tell you about how they've savaged everything the human race in their greed have savaged the 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 um, earth's um, uh, goods and minerals. To the place where now it's just a graveyard and the atmosphere. No wonder there's going to be a new heavens. 
you got all the greenies out there, they'll say, oh, you know, here, 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 here. A new heaven, a new atmosphere, a whole new um, globe. So don't worry about global warming or warnings. Don't worry about that, it's going to be all new. Where righteousness dwells. That's where this new earth is going to be. Where righteousness dwells. So, Jesus Christ, and they say, oh well, you know, we're going to reign on the earth and, and we're going to be kings and this and that. Well, the scriptures say it's going to be a new earth. He's going to burn this earth to asunder with fire. Peter said the same thing again. Can you say amen? Yes, yes. <laughs> so the newsletter today. Look, Satan has the right to, to trick you if you're in sin. Satan has all the rights in the world to harass you if you're in sin. But you've got ministers today, they, they, they believe their reverence and their ministers. And they say, oh, Satan has no right to harass you. Oh, yes, he does if you're in sin. I, I know a bona fide saint. I know a bona fide apostolic saint that was harassed by the devil. And it was all, all legal. All the paperwork and everything was done by God. His name was Paul. His name, listen, his name was Paul. And the scripture reads, that's what I stand on, I stand on the rock, scriptures. Not some garbage, some Roman Catholic says, or, 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 or some Muslim, or some uh, Episcopal, or whatever. Uniting church, hogwash. The word of God says, don't worry about my book, I'm going to sing you a hymn later, so you... Make sure you got the full armor on. Uh, the word of God says very clearly that Paul's thought in the flesh was a messenger from Avon. Hello, like 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 a messenger from Tupperware. Nah, he was a messenger from Satan or it. Or oh, that thing, that thorn in the flesh, to, 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 to steady him. That was Paul's steering damper. <laughs> if you know anything about motorcycles, 